Welcome. Right now, we're at Distributech 2023 with thousands of our utility friends, and I have the um, privilege to be sitting here with Ileana Rents. Ileana, you want a little bit, who are you? What do you do at FPNL? Sure, thank you, Brian, and thank you for having me. Um, my name is Ileana Rents, and I have the privilege and opportunity to oversee vegetation management for for the enterprise. What that means really is for on the regulated utility side, right, we've got FPL service territory in Florida, and the company also has um, significant assets throughout, throughout the country. So my team has responsibility for all VM across the enterprise. Wow, what a job. L luckily too, I live in Florida, and um, I go visit Ileana quite, quite often, and I will tell you, the vegetation that she has and some of the issues they're dealing with are very unique. But we're going to have a conversation today about vegetation management and the practices that I see at FPNL are just amazing. And then extend to NextEra, because a lot of things I think our viewers don't know is how much larger your job is than just the state of Florida. Yes. I think you're Sir 49. You've had, you and I have had this debate before. So from a vegetation management perspective, we've got um, assets in 47 states and four provinces in Canada. So thank you. So let's start with some questions. Let the audience know a little bit, like, how is VI helping you ultimately better serve customers and communities? Because any of us in this utility space, we know it's all about our customers and communities. So how is VI helping? The visual intelligence platform, in essence, has really given us a 3D digital twin of not just our assets, but the vegetation that surrounds the assets in, in, in near real time, right? So it's a snapshot in time, but the beauty of it is, is it allows us to understand where we need to do work, right? So from a preventative maintenance on the vegetation front, where we need to do work and allow us to have the right resources with the right tools at the right place at the right time. And from a customer perspective, it really helps the experience for the customer so much better because we're better able to quantify the work and work with the customer, let them know when we will be in their neighborhoods um, doing preventative maintenance on, on their particular feeders or laterals, neighborhood lines, or, or, or um, could be transmission as well. Very good, and it, it's interesting to go off on a tangent for a second. A lot of people just think, go plant a tree wherever they want, right? I think that's another core principle that anyone in vegetation management knows, is it really is the right tree, too, in the right place. Another conversation you and I have had for a long time. Yes, yes, Brian, and thank you, right? So Right Tree, Right Place is an initiative that we work very closely with our customers on. And having the ability to have a 3D representation of what the, an incompatible tree looks like and how, it, it, and how organically it does not work organically with the electrical infrastructure gives us yet another visual tool to help customers in decision-making processes when they're selecting trees for their own landscaping. Yeah, and as a Florida resident, I'll tell you, I love my palms, but I love my palms in the right locations. That's right. So, all right, let's jump on to our second question here. Another core principle, right, is safety and security. It's one of the things that I think we're just grown up with, that you've got to keep everything safe and secure. Is there anything that you really can think about how visual intelligence helps you with that ultimate mission that you have, is keeping everyone, your um, customers, your employees, your just the system, everything safe and secure? Yes, that's a great question. And at Florida Power and Light and NextEra, right, safety is the number one thing that we do. There, you know, our, our, our entire um, approach to everything that we do is about our employees working safely and returning home the same way they came to work. By the same token, is about providing safe, reliable electric service for our customers. Right, so as we look at the different tools and technologies that we bring into our toolbox and into our decision-making processes, visual intelligence really helps us understand, um, again, where the work is. And from a reliability of electric service for that safe and re reliable electric service, ensuring that we do not have trees encroaching on our power lines that are going to cause outages, particularly when you're looking at the bulk electric system or our transmission lines, is key to providing customers that safe and reliable electric service. And I, I, it's one of those ones, again, people in our industry realize, right, how dangerous a tree can be coming in contact with the line. So I think, again, for the viewers, it's one of those ones I think about all the time is we keep this under control. You see improvements in Katie and safety. And for those, again, it's the duration and frequency of outages, I think, is a direct correlation of vegetation management. And 
when I look at the statistics for FPNL, I think there's some leading statistics you guys are doing in both those spaces. Yes, sir. And again, Brian, you know, so we, you know, we do pride ourselves on, on a lot of the great work and initiatives that we've been able to employ throughout our system for, for, for reliability, right? So Florida Power and Light, we, we have worked over the many years on increasing the reliability of our grid through a variety of storm secure and hardening programs that we've had. Um, when we look at safety and reliability, there's also going back to the right tree, right place initiatives and helping bring the education back to our customers. And we also do, and, and visual intelligence also helps us with another tool on, on messaging to customers on the, uh, I'll say, dangers associated towards working near power lines and overhead facilities. Yeah, no, thank you. Next question, and again, for everybody, you can tell Ileana and I have worked together for a while, and we've had this discussion. Some software providers and tools come in and actually will do a project-based approach, right? Well, they'll say, I'm going to go fly this section, or I'm going to go out and do this indiv individual piece of a network. And I think one of the first challenges you gave me was, Brian, you can't think about this as projects. This is a network. And can you explain to everybody, like, what is the power of a network-based model and approach to vegetation management and what we're doing with BI? Sure, when you're looking at platform, global platform analytics, right? If, if, you ascent, if we were to have every piece of the data that we have flown as a project, then it's its own silo. You don't have the ability to compare it to others. And it's a snapshot in time that lives in perpetuity within its own capsule, for lack of a better term, right? So when we challenge the, the teams as they were developing to, to build it as a network model, you, the beauty of that network model is now you can literally look at either a 2D or a 3D digital representation that's a digital twin where you can pan and zoom, you can look at lines that are interconnected, you can look at underbuilt work, you can look at lines that are, that are side by side each other and see everything in one view space versus calling an individual single line. Yep. Right, and, and, and there's a lot of power in being able to look at your network holistically and not at the individual granular level, particularly when you're doing cost modeling, when you're doing reliability metrics, when you're doing work planning, when you're doing resource modeling. It really is what enables the decision-making process throughout the life cycle of the work on an annual basis that the network view of, of the digital twin is um, the optimal way of, of solutioning. So, the, another piece a little bit off script here though is, when I think about the training that we've done with your employees, it's amazing how your people have adopted. So I want to ask you that question is, do you see going from paper-based systems to this iPad digital twin, being able to go in this, is that a massive change for your, your staff? Is, are they adopting this? Do they like love it, open-armed? How, how's the reaction? That's a great question, but as with anything, change management is this single, regardless of how good the technology is, without a robust change management plan, and many, many times it'll be a non-starter, right? So as we have, as, as we rolled out this technology, the first thing that we started with was a change management training, right, and, and then pulse and measure. So when we looked at change management at the beginning of the rollout, we scored it. And the initial score was actually very low. Why do we have to change? The system works. Um, however, once the team spent a few hours and a day in training, by the end of that day, before they even came back to the second day, they were excited. Um, because it was going to make their jobs more efficient, their decision making more discreet and certain. Right, so now they're making better decisions that they have more trust in. And at the end of the day, when we finished the training and we re scored the change management and how they felt, it went from a probably the lowest score to the highest score. They were excited. They were yeah. excited to get in there and they were says, When can I have access? When can I use this? Right. So in 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 my time with introducing new technology, I will say that this was by far the best adopted tool that we've been able to deploy for, for our teams and they're very excited about the, its future and capabilities. 
the, the part that I'll explain to the audience too is, I went to the training and the power, just the excitement that everybody felt, it was contagious. Yeah. I was seriously couldn't believe how well your training went and people were just extremely excited about the new technology, using it, kept pushing, saying here's all the other things we can do. It was just awesome. So I just want to congratulate you on an amazing training program that you've done. Thank you. It was a pleasant surprise for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, one of the next questions we're going to talk about is the weather and climate. For some reason, again, the weather just keeps changing. I keep hearing that we're getting the worst storm ever. Just lived through my first hurricane. I mean, there's a lot of craziness going on in the hur in, in hurricanes and weather. How do you continuously think about the weather, climate change, what's happening? Is it going to get better, continue to get worse? I know you're not a meteorologist, but you, you sure watch the weather. So what's your prediction? <laughs> well. I don't know that I could predict the weather, <laughs> right? Um, and I'm not going to try because if our meteorologists were listening, he would he would have a conversation with me about it. But what I will say is, we are seeing every year. It seems like the storms are getting bigger; they're getting more frequent, right? The the change in climatology is 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 just huge. What I will say is, um, my team actually did a study last year because we've also seen, from a growth pattern perspective, we've seen our growth patterns exponentially change, right? And one of the gentlemen on my team is actually a forestry science scientist, is what I'll call him, and he did a full study on just the cellular dynamic changes in trees. So what that means is they're elongated, and when they're elongated, they're growing faster, and they're growing scrawnier. So it's almost like because they're ahead of their time, wow. they're not establishing the deeper root system. So what does that mean for an electrical infrastructure? It means quicker failures, yep. faster encroachment, and introduced risk, right? So this technology actually helps us look at those patterns and be able to get into a predictive mode where you know where you're going to have problems sooner and allows you to plan and, and, and create mitigation strategies in a lot better and faster time than we've ever been able to do in the past. Um, from severe weather impacts, I mean, I think everybody's seeing it across the world, right? I mean, there was this horrible earthquake in, in Syria and Turkey, right? So we're seeing a lot of these changes, and I think it's just, we just need to be able to pull and leverage technology to help us make better decisions with the information. That's awesome. So now, my kind of, I'll call it final kind of question towards it here is, you've got this amazing system in, I'm going to call it, you've got autopilot, you guys are just sitting back relaxing. There's nothing you're doing to advance, right? Right. So. <laughs> so, and again, leading question intentionally, this team, again, as a credit, just continues to push. It's a, I've got this delivered, what's next? So that's what's fun for the um, our audience is, what do you see next? Where is this continuing to go? Because it's not stopping. The change, all these new technologies are things that are going to keep progressing. And again, I just want to let the audience know what are some of the things you're thinking about in the future. Yeah, so this technology, right, so phase one was build this 3D network model. Then pull in a 3D point cloud digital twin. We can't stop there, right? It's a tool. So the LiDAR data is phenomenal and it is a great tool, but there's also satellite. And what is the proper tool and use case for each technology, right? Yep. So we have assets in the desert. Do we need to fly LiDAR on a regular basis or can we leverage satellite imagery to say nothing's changed, nothing's grown, nothing's been planted, is it good enough? Right, so it's about looking at the additional technologies, bringing them into the platform, continue to develop those technologies and then expand it beyond. How does this tool now become a tool that our engineering teams can also leverage yep. for different use cases. So just last week, we had a meeting about, okay, what's next? Yep. Right? And I think that there's a lot of exciting possibility, and I'm very excited for the future of this technology. I am too. And it's interesting, I'm going to go back to the right tree, right use case kind of in that. It's the same thing with data. As yeah. you talked a lot about, we've been partnering a lot with FPNL looking at, in that desert scenario, let, let's just go get satellite imagery, right? In the LiDAR, let's bring in that. If it's ground-based, if it's aerial-based. And that's what's fun is the technology allows you to bring in all the data from these various sources and then just keep unlocking value. Yeah. So again, the thing I'll tell most of our listeners here is get into the journey. Right? It's one of those ones, I think, jump in. You're not too late, you're not too early. Just jump in now, join us on this adventure, and it's gonna be fun to continue to watch how we can help you evolve your vegetation management program for your utilities.
So I'm sitting here getting the signal that we actually have a couple more times for some other questions. Um, any other things that you think the audience should know, kind of open-ended, or I'm thinking through ones too? I, you know, what I will say is we're only as good as we are as an industry. And I think that collaborating across companies as we are ideating and solutioning towards the innovation platforms, I think those are opportunities that we should also continue to foster and leverage as an industry. Are there any good industry groups that people could sign up for? I know that you were just talking about a couple today with a couple customers. There are a lot of really great industry groups that we can certainly um, partner with, but you know, I think that at the very least it's, I think the company should look to the industry groups that are already yeah. participating in rather, and, and, and asking the question, are there VM tactical groups? And if there is, can I raise my hand and join? Yeah. Right? Or is there the technology innovation visual imagery roadmaps that I can raise my hand and participate in. I think we'll all naturally find each other. Yeah, I think you will too. That's the one thing, again, back to our industry, it is so small. There's so many opportunities. Again, join us on LinkedIn, send myself or Ileana private messages. We'll get right back with you. We'll help connect to others. Because I think, again, we're the best as a community when we come together and we try to figure out how to solve some of these biggest problems. Um, I think that's about it. Can we, I think, towards the end of our session here? Yeah, so thank you again for everybody for joining. It's a wrap.